Are you tired of monitoring sound and not being able to walk away from the tripod? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an inconvenience, but I can just take my headphones off. Does your tinnitus act up causing daily discomfort because of the loud volume you can't control? Okay, there's that. I guess that's a bit more of an issue. Then do something about it. That's it? That's your infomercial? You're not going to try to sell me on anything? Well, the product exists, and you could buy them, but where's the fun in that? Go make them yourself. Don't be lazy. Yeah, all right. These are my Sony MDR-7506 headphones. The sound coming through these is flat, meaning what you hear is what you get. Music listening headphones, on the other hand, have some equalization going on usually, whatever it is that makes it more enjoyable to listen to. So it's hard to tell exactly on a film set what is being picked up by the microphone. That's where these headphones come in. And while they sound great for a $100 set of headphones, They've got a couple drawbacks I noticed within one filming session. Number one, the cord is not detachable. The other flaw is that these headphones don't come with a volume control, which means that if the gain's higher on your microphone, it's gonna be louder in your ears. So I wanna just make a large knob I can turn without really looking at it that will solve that problem for me. Here are the parts I'm gonna need for the project. Humans hear volume on a logarithmic scale rather than a linear one. So I'm using this logarithmic stereo potentiometer to adjust the volume. These audio jacks will be placed on opposite sides of the project box, with my headphones going in one side, the camera going into another. Because this device is going to be unpowered, I can only lower the volume going into the headphones, I can't raise it. To do that, you would need an amplifier. This audio jack is a higher quality one than these. I'm going to use this to hopefully get the highest sound fidelity coming into the headphones as possible. I'll use this cable to test the system along the way, and use a multimeter to touch between the leads to make sure that I've connected everything up correctly. Before hacking up my project box, I need to test the setup. And of course, in my shop, cutting wires means... Cleaver. Cthulhu! Here's the schematic I'm going off of. We have the potentiometer in the center, the 3.5 millimeter jacks on the sides, and I'm not gonna be using these two connectors or this switch. Here you can see the tip, ring, and sleeve connections. The sleeves are connected to ground via the gray lines. The tip is connected to the left channel via the green lines, and the ring is connected to the right channel via the blue lines. Now let's connect these up. I'm just hoping I don't melt the plastic housing. As I understand it, we have the pins on the left going to ground, the two in the center going out to the headphones, and the two on the right going to the input or the camera. There are the final connections. Now to test my setup, I'm gonna plug my device into my laptop and the other end into my headphones and see if I can change the volume of some music. And don't look. I know it doesn't help if I make the music, but I'm happy to work on a project. What happens when you go to YouTube and just type in music? What's the first song? Best songs 2020, top 40. All right, let's see what it's got for me. T-Swift. Yo, so what's up? <laughs> oh my God, this is so cool. Oh, thank you, Taylor. And most importantly, whoever made the schematic on Instructables, that's really the key here. Oh, well, I, I gotta get some speakers. Hang on. 100 Steps by Legang. Enough of that. Now to cram this inside of this. Who needs precise measurements when you have geometry? Ah. Watch your torque. Washer. Mm. Oh, it's got a little nub. Why is that nub there? That's annoying. It's got this tiny little nub that I need to grind down. It's getting in the way. Eh, it's a little off center, but that's okay. We take these jacks, place them on the side. Okay. 
Oh, I should probably take this out before I start drilling into this and then breaking it. Oh, no, is this... No! It wasn't the correct side. Well, yeah, I won't go in. So, I didn't fully drill the hole there. That's okay. But, check your work. Thus completes the Swiss cheesing portion of this demonstration. To make things easier, I'm going to use stranded wire so that I can easily solder up outside the enclosure and then flex it into place. So I've stripped these ground wires extra long and I'm gonna just twist the entire thing together so I have one connection to make. And there we are. Boo-loo-loo-loo. -loo -loo. Name that video game. Easy way to champ for a hole. Just get a bigger drill bit. Spin it once around. At least in plastic. Let's add the knob. I suggest hand screwing things into plastic. A drill can easily strip it out. Now for a final test. Box. The moment of truth. And there you have it, a volume knob. All that's left to do is add a little tick mark to show which volume level it's currently at. Now on to the detachable cord. I need to access the left ear cup to add a jack, but there are no screws on the outside. These, like many other earphones, require you to remove the cushion first. Some take a little bit more force than this one, but just be careful you don't tear anything. And there we are. Now we have our screws on the inside we can remove to expose the wires. With these small screws, as always, be careful not to strip out the threads. Now I'll remove this, comes out as one piece, and I want to be careful not to tear the connections on the backside. We've got plenty of cable length here, so we want to make sure not to cut it too short. I'd much rather have it too long and trim it down. So I'm going to cut the wire out here since there's plenty of space in the cup to push it back up in when I have soldered it to the jack. I'm going to strip away some of the jacket so that I can check which wire goes to which part of the plug. And I'm going to practice soldering on these wires because the insulation is a little bit different than most of the plastic insulation that I've been stripping away on my other wires. Finally, I have a little piece here that I'm going to use to remake this into a functioning cable. The best way I've found to strip cable like this is roll a sharp utility knife on it in circle carefully so you don't cut the wires and you can actually leave a little bit of the jacket on because eventually it's going to be so weak you can twist it and pull it off. That way you don't slice any of the leads. As opposed to standard wire like this where you strip away a plastic or a rubber jacket, these wires are insulated by a coating of enamel that I've heard you can burn away with solder and heat, so I'm going to try that. Others say nail polish, but uh, we'll try the solder first. Lucky for me, no nail polish was required, just heat and solder. I put my multimeter in continuity mode to test the connection, and you can hear that beep. So we have the green wire is connected to the tip, the red wire is connected to the ring, and the black wire is connected to the sleeve. The color on the wire comes from the enamel coating, but the copper wire is also coated with enamel, it's just clear, so you still have to burn through it before you can get a proper solder connection. It took a bit of finesse, but I was able to solder on the replacement jack. You just have to carefully cut your leads to the right length, and of course, always remember the little strain relief piece that comes in the kit. Put that on before you do the soldering. Finally, you have to bend this little tab here to hold on to the cable. I've removed the grommet from the ear cup and I stuffed the cable back inside and put two screws in place so that I didn't hurt the wire connections that are currently going to the speaker as I dremel this little nub off. If I left in the way, this jack won't fit. The neck isn't long enough. There it is removed. I scarred up a little bit, but I'll paint it later. And without hurting these wires, I need to carefully drill out that hole to fit the jack. Be careful to go slow and that the drill doesn't torque these out of your hand or break something. 
Now the inside of the ear cup is curved, and the bottom of the jack is flat. So when I put it in place, there's not enough thread sticking out the other side to hold it down. So I'm going to grind down the edges of the jack so that it sits more flush. There's the ground edge, and I was really careful not to touch the threads so that the nut still goes on easily. And I cleaned all the filings off afterwards to make sure I don't get shorts within the headphone. The grinding wasn't quite enough, but I was able to do some careful dremeling to get the jack to finally fit. The key to it was using a fresh sanding wheel and have the edge over the screw so that you can get flat into the cup. I also did that on the other side a little bit so that the nut can fit and I tested it to make sure that it can tighten down. When I had the jack screwed down and locked in place, I reattached the plate and screwed it down and it just fits. So now I'm just gonna take the spray paint and use a Q-tip to add a little bit around the damaged area. While the paint dries, I'm going to start prepping this end for soldering. The best technique I found was just to put a big blob of solder on the end of your soldering iron and heat up the end of the wire for a while until you see the solder start to soak in. Just in case during assembly things get crowded, I'm going to add a little bit of heat shrink. The trick here is to cut as short of a piece as possible that will still cover the joint and quickly solder it so the heat of the wire doesn't prematurely shrink the heat shrink. Believe it or not, I still have an iPod. Haven't used it for years, but I'm gonna use it to test these for the first time. What do we got? 115, the Kino Der Toten Black Op Zombies Secret Song by Elena Siegeman. Yes! I didn't destroy them! Ha! Huh, what a relief. Now to reassemble everything being as careful as possible not to scratch the paint I added. As I button everything up, I'm gonna hot glue the cable on the back side here because the strain relief tab that's left would bend the cable too much for these connections. Ooh, wow, that's really hot. I should have put it on low temp. Oh no, this is a disaster. While the glue cools down, I'm being careful not to place the small wires near it. Just in case you need to open this up again later on, I don't want those connections to break. And here is the finished interior. Ta-da! No more ridiculous cable. To finish things off, we're gonna do a full system test. Laptop into my volume knob, connected via refurbished cable into the headphones. Turn it up to 10, which is programmer's 11, because there's a zero, and... Now you may be asking, why alter something like this when there are so many other suitable options? You can find a pre-assembled volume knob for around the cost of these components. And there's even a clone of my exact headphones that comes with a detachable cable for a lower price. That's the beauty of customization though. You don't have to settle for what's already available. I wanted well-reviewed, reputable headphones to get the best sound quality possible. They only come with a permanent cable, which I can now replace with a more manageable one or a Bluetooth receiver to make them wireless. As for the volume knob, I wanted one in a case that had holes for a mounting strap. These small changes allow me to tailor high quality products to precisely fit my needs. And I'm filled with a sense of pride every time I interact with something I've made my own. Maybe you need a mount or a holder that hasn't been created yet. There couldn't be a more perfect reason to customize a similar one and test your idea. Who knows? You may iterate onto the design enough to bring it to market as an entirely new gadget. Remember, if you break something, you can get another. Don't let the fear of having to replace a commodity product prevent you from gaining a wealth of knowledge. Ask yourself, what's truly worth more in the end? Now, when you go down this route, you need to be okay with things not being perfect. If your modified part has a scratch, you drill the wrong hole, or something doesn't exactly line up, it's okay. If the project hasn't had every detail and scheduling issue planned down to a T, start it anyway with 50% mapped out and figure out the rest along the way. And one more thing, we all struggle with wondering if things we make are good enough. We compare our projects to those of others rather than comparing our current projects to our past projects. I'm particularly guilty of that, and it's a feeling I'm working to conquer over time. It won't happen instantly, but I can tell you one thing for certain. 
The best way to start improving is to just dive in. Look around your house, find something you want to customize, and go void a few warranties. The rewards are worth the effort, and your world will be made better as a result. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching. It's like WYSIWYG, but HERIWYG instead. <laughs> HERIWYG. Ah, oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. It looks like a halo. It looks divine with the overexposure. That's what I'm going for if you didn't recognize. Tick mark to show me which current volume the, 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 the thing is at. The thing, the volume knob. There are three of them. Forget to scroll. That reset. Oh gosh. So many other suitable options. I forgot to scroll the monitor again. And there's it just wants to fall. Oh, the cable fell out too. <laughs> this take is going great. Ah.